Shalom and welcome to Women's Radio, Phase 2. I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit of Yahweh. I'm thankful for the things that He brings me through. We just did a study on afflictions and, and I'm thankful for afflictions. Which brings us to another subject <laughs> that I've been praying about this morning, even thinking on and studied on. We're going to talk about no distractions. We must stay focused. As holy women of Yahweh, we must stay focused. No distractions. What do we stay focused on? We must abide within the boundaries of obedience and humility. Within the boundaries of Yahweh's word. In our everyday walk. Our everyday loving relationship. In intercessory prayer. In fasting throughout the week. Sacrificing all that food that makes us fat and sluggish. Eating what's necessary and wholesome. Not yielding to junk food. Naturally or spiritually. Wow. This is the way y'all has been dealing with me for me. So I'm sharing it with you as Abba gives it to me for me. This is a body ministry. I want to share the wonderful things that Yahweh Almighty gives me. <clears throat> All right. Let's look at the word distracted and distraction. They only appear two times in our Bibles. Well, let's put it this way. They only appear twice in the KJV. And these two verses are found in Psalms 88 and 15 and 1 Corinthians 7 and 35. So let's start with Psalms 88 and 15, okay? Because this was given first. The new blood covenant was a fulfillment of the first blood covenant. Psalms 88 and 15. It says, I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up while I suffer thy terrors and am distracted. Wow. So the meaning of distracted from the Hebrew is, it's the Hebrew word or Hebrew root word, poon. Poon. And it means to be perplexed. It repeats the word distracted, meaning dubious. Uh, it's a primitive root word, meaning to turn, and then it repeats the word perplexed. Now, please note that there is a root word that goes with this word distracted. And it gets into the meaning of to put on or to envelop in, to hide in, or to literally put on or clothe with a garment to creep into insinuate oneself into or to enter. Wow! That's the root word. The root word of distracted or distract. Well, it is, it is the word distracted in the, in the Hebrew. <laughs> in other words, ladies, the enemy of our soul can creep into our lives using extreme real-life situations to bring on fear, doubt, unbelief, despair, hardness of heart, oppression, depression, any kind of emotion to cause these weak vessels. That's what the scripture tells women what women are. They're weak vessels. They are the weak vessel. Yes, that's what the word says. Some women don't consider themselves weak. Okay, Yahweh says we are. So I believe him over what anybody else says. <laughs> and these, these emotions, any kind of an emotion, can cause anxiety or any other worse adverse emotion. So when this happens, what do we do? We must speak the word against the adversary of our soul against the emotion to build faith. Oh, yeah. 
We do not see faith, do we? We do not feel faith. We do not hear faith. We do not smell faith. We speak Yahweh's word. This is where the spiritual warfare comes in. This is where the spiritual warfare wins for our benefit to defeat distractions that the enemy brings in. And Yahweh allows these things. Yes, he does. He allows things to come into our lives. We can find examples all through his word. Okay, here's the other verse. 1 Corinthians 7.35 And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cause a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that ye, am, that ye may attend upon Adonai, or Yahweh, without distraction. In other words, if you read the prior verses, it's talking about when a man and wife marries. Okay, you read it for yourself. That ye attend upon Yahweh without distraction. Okay, for us, because we're women. This is a women's program, by the way. If you guys listen, you know that's between you and him. By the way, I'm going to run another rabbit trail. <laughs> um, as I read, I will properly put back Yahweh's name where humans have, remo have removed it. Where you see uppercase L-O-R-D, uppercase G-O-D, and the errors of Jehovah, Jesus, or Yeshua. Or any other kind of Shua. I'm going to put Yahweh's name back. Okay, so let's get back here. For our prophet, we attend upon Yahweh without distraction. And if you, as I was saying, if you read the above verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, you'll find that it's talking about husband and wife marriage. For us, as wives, we cannot be distracted. We, of course, we know we have to do Martha stuff. But we need to do Mary's stuff as well. We got to keep our relationship in prayer every day before our day gets started. We got to put him first. We got to keep him in our thought train all the day long, praising him, talking to him, communing with him in our spirit, in our heart, keeping a tight relationship and on our face again before we get before we go to bed at night. And if you get time through the day when you're not doing Martha stuff, bow your face again. Give him honor. This is true worship, bowing our face before him without distraction, giving him honor. Okay, so the meaning, let's get the meaning of distraction from this 1 Corinthians, okay? It gets into, again, without distraction, without solicitude or anxiety or care. Without care. Now, what are some distractions? Well, we know that the world news can be a big distraction. The world news can create fear, anxieties, and, oh, what are we going to do? Oh, look at what they're doing. They're cutting people's heads off. The scripture tells you that. That they were, that they were beheaded for the witness of Mashiach. And his name sure wasn't J-E-S-U-S -S or nor Shua name. They were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Almighty. We know this is coming, but somewhere the religious system has made this a story, a fairy tale. Oh, we're going to get out of here before then. Uh-uh. <laughs> not according to Matthew chapter 24. We're not going to get out of here. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, he's coming back. Read Matthew 24 again, ladies. So world news can be a distraction. We already know from the word what the news is, don't we? But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. When world news starts bringing on an adverse emotion, ditch it. Go back to the word. You know, that reminds me of another study. I had some a couple years back. Um, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Now, you'd think that that word wicked might mean something um, just exceedingly horrible. You know, something perverted, something sexual, murder, lying, something really horrific. But you know what it says? The Hebraic meaning gets into anything unprofitable and worthless. <laughs> yeah. So, 
<laughs> Since I read that, it's so funny. Abba is so sweet to me. I just appreciate him. So if I get on something and run a rabbit trail on something that I might be looking at, if it's you know news to do with Israel, and I might get caught up in a rabbit trail with what they're doing, uh, some things you know are good. But when you start looking to uh, humans to protect you, or uh, dogs to protect you, my goodness, we we better get back in focus. Yahweh is the only one that can take care of us and protect us. Bottom line, it's not our soldiers, it's not our workforce, it's not our military, it's not our trained animals. Which these things are good. These are good. But when it comes down to push come to shove, our main protection, our sword and our shield, our sword and our shield is the word of Yahweh and the spirit of Yahweh Almighty. He's the only one that's going to see us through a fiery furnace. He is the only one, the only protection, the only one that we can keep our confidence in without distraction. My, how to get on that? Okay. So with this knowledge of evil seducers are waxing worse and worse, we just got to stay focused on what? On his word. Other distractions of this life might be that situations that come up with brothers or sisters within the faith of Yahweh. Those that are yet carnal, but should be at a more mature level. I've been faced with this of late in a few directions. The enemy causing those who were yet carnal to lie or falsely accuse me, which created an adversity in my own spirit, whereby I needed blood to cleanse my heart so I can stay focused. My inner depths were so intense with wrong that had been done to me that I was distracted, neglecting to pray in brokenness for the ones who had caused my grief. I had to repent of this distraction and ask Abba to give me a burden to pray for those that yielded to that evil towards me in brokenness of spirit before him because they had misunderstood my strictness as an attack, which I don't mind telling the truth, but I just recently heard some teachings on how to deliver the truth. Now, it's not, you know, sometimes, you know, as you tell a child, you know, you teach a baby and, and you, no, 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 no. No, no, and then the, the offense is done again, so you kind of slap the hand, and then you tell them again, and finally you just bust their hide, and the rod grows with the child. Well, some people don't understand uh, babies that are supposed to be spiritual babies. Yeah, you might handle them a little bit different if they're fresh off the street, but um, these that are babies who are supposed to be weaned off the milk, come on, where's their relationship? So you go to them in a spirit of meekness when the offense is done and say, hey, you know, you shouldn't do this. And then when the recidivism rate keeps on for years and years and years and they remain babies, it starts getting irritable because you don't want to see that influence on, on real babies. You don't want to see that carnal influence on real babies. So, you know, then, then we got to leave that in the hands of Yahweh. You know, we, we correct and we correct and we might get a little sterner with that, hey. You know, we might lose our spirit, but we, we, we are angry and sin not. We just tell them, and, and what they do with it is in their ballpark, and we got to stay focused. And that's where I was. I did not stay focused. I had to repent of this distraction and again ask Yahweh to give me a burden to pray for those that yielded to these evil spirits of this carnality that, um, that where, I, you know, just st stuff was getting said, and I had to stop that. I, had to, I couldn't focus on that. I had to ask Yahweh to give me a burden to pray for them. <laughs> and after I obeyed this, after I obeyed this in asking Abba in brokenness to give me brokenness for them, my, I actually got brokenness for them. And I was actually able to pray with compassion and when Abba saw this, he started giving me dreams about one in particular, one, one in particular uh, person's spiritual condition. And then I understood, well, why this is why they acted that way, because I expected more of that certain person. I expected more of them. You know, and, and I'm just one to, look, just come tell you something eyeball to eyeball. 
I don't send long four-page emails. You know, uh, some people are too far away. I either have to call them or send them a message on a uh, private message or try to call them. I like to talk to the person eyeball to eyeball. I don't take the chicken way out and send a letter or an email. No, I don't do that. Unless they're just too far away, and then I grab a phone. If I can't get a hold of them by phone, well, you know, I just try to wait on it. You know, but I believe in confronting things mouth to mouth. You know, not with some stupid letter or some stupid email. You know, this is not scriptural principle. That's made it easy for the carnal when they need to face that thing head on. But after I prayed, you know, Yahweh showed me that this person was in a real mess. A real mess. And this was the reason for their behavior. So know this, everyone. Know this, please. Abba allows things to come our way to test, prove us, to ensure ensure that we obey his word and do the right thing thing against our will, against our emotions, against our feelings, crucifying that thing that might rise up. He sees that we get lots of practice, believe me. He gives me lots of practice. And I can't teach you as an aged woman unless I've experienced victory over that thing that would ail me. And y'all was giving me victory, and I've noticed <laughs> that no teaching comes, no nothing revelation comes to me uh, until I've completed my course <laughs> in the situation that I'm in, and until I have overcome that thing that was trying my own spirit. I can't teach you unless I've overcome, unless I've received revelation, unless I've walked in that victory to overcome and let not that person's problem become mine. And you have to watch it because the ones that get you the worst that in the worst out of shape is immediate family or immediate Yahweh family when you expect more of a person supposed to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we've all fallen short. And it's not wrong to stay wrong. <laughs> I'm, well, it's wrong to stay wrong. It's not wrong to be wrong. Let me put it that way. If we're wrong, we're wrong. We got an advocate with Yahweh Almighty. No matter what it people thinks that we still might be this or we still might be that, we know we got things right because we've got blood. No, and that can be another distraction. <laughs> when you know you've got something under the blood and the enemy uses people's mouths to constantly accuse, we rise above that. And Yahweh will allow it to keep coming our way to prove us and test us to make sure that we keep the right spirit. That's all I can say. Distractions. Whether they're within our spirit or distractions in this life. Um, shopping. Using, spending money that you don't have. Buying things that you don't need. Oh my word. The stores are full of women's distractions. <laughs> if you don't notice these stores, the women's departments are humongous and the men's departments are just a little small. <laughs> men can be content. You know, men can be content with things. Women are different. They're more complex. They're weak. Abba, help me. <laughs> Abba, help me. I think I about got the victory over that, though. I've had the victory over that for quite some many, many years. Okay, he sees we get we get lots of practice, right? So what? <coughs> so what is the conclusion of the whole matter? What is the conclusion of the whole matter? Distractions. What's the conclusion of it? All right, here's the final conclusion. Now that you've heard everything, this is Ecclesiastes 12 and 13 from the complete Jewish Bible. It reads here is the final conclusion. Now that you have heard everything, fear Elohim. Who's Elohim? Yahweh. Only Yahweh. And keep, this word keep gets into the word obey. Shema. Shema Yisrael. Yahweh Eloheinu. Yahweh Echad. Hear O Yisrael. Yahweh our Elohim. Yahweh is one. And keep his mitzvot, his commandments. This is what human 
this is what being human is all about. This is the complete Jewish Bible, how it reads. Okay, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13 from the KJV says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Elohim and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Okay, you ever looked up that word fear? What does it mean to fear Yahweh? Fear Elohim. All right, it gets into the Hebrew root word, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. And it means to fear, to revere, to be afraid, to stand in awe of, to reverence, to honor, to respect, to be fearful, dreadfully fearful. To cause astonishment and awe. To be held in awe. To inspire. Then it repeats reverence again. Or godly fear. To make afraid. To terrify. Wow. <laughs> We've got a lot to work on. And we have to. And y'all will sees to it. That we have to have afflictions come our way. We, have, we are allowed to have distractions come our way. Yahweh allows things to happen to us to check us that we must rise above our five senses to make our flesh do that which is right, get our spirit and our attitude under the blood, and keep moving. I read a lot of things that come to my Facebook page. I do read some news. I keep up with world news, especially what's going on in Israel, because they are our time clock. Um, some news is just not worthy. We don't need to get into all the blood and guts and gore. Um, we know some blood and guts are coming. And may y'all will help us all. Y'all will help us all. I pray that we can be like those three Hebrew boys that went into the fiery furnace. If Yahweh delivers me, or if he doesn't deliver me, I am going to praise his holy name. I pray that I can have a song in my spirit and sing the glory of Yahweh through whatever comes my way. I pray Yahweh help me to stay focused. Because I know what I am. I'm a woman. <laughs> I'm a weak vessel. But I do know one thing. In the Apocrypha, in the books of the Apocrypha, I encourage every woman to read these gory details, okay? I believe it's in 2 Maccabees, uh, somewhere around between 7 and 12th chapter. I can't remember exactly. But it tells a story, several stories, about how the children of Israel stood for the word of Yahweh. The little things and the big things. Some people might think you can eat what you want to, but Yahweh's word don't say that. He talks. He gives us a menu. He gives us a diet of what to eat. He tells us to keep the Shabbat day. Don't work on it. And I pray that I would be able to do that against enemy forces that would torture me or whatever. I pray that I could obey against physical abuse. This is what I pray. Because I know what I am. I know my makeup is human. And I pray that I would be so clothed in the power of Yahweh, if, that, if and when that day approaches, that I can do the right thing. But getting back to this woman, she had seven sons. And she was brought before the king of Greece. And that king had them tortured, had those boys tortured from the eldest to the youngest. Um, he scalped them first. You need to read this stuff. They scalped them first. Then they pulled their extremities apart, cut them off, cut off their extremities. Uh, some places they cut out their tongue. And then what was left alive, they boiled it in oil or threw it in the fire. This is what they did one by one. And this mama watched her baby boys that she birthed from her womb being tortured. 
And when it came down to the last child, the boy looked at his mother. In other words, what do I do? And she spoke to him in the Hebrew tongue, and I'm going to paraphrase basically what she said. I carried you in my womb for nine months. I've taught you the word of Yahweh all your life. Now you stand as your brothers have stood, and you endure this thing until your death. And that boy turned on that king, and he called him some kind of name. He said, thou butcher, or something like that. Called him a butcher. And it enraged that king so badly that the writing says that he treated this child worse than all the other six. What could possibly be worse? Y'all will have mercy. And you know what the writing says about the woman? It said that she had the courage of a man. <laughs> Abba, this is what I want. I want the courage of a man, even though I'm a weak vessel, I want the courage of a man to stand unto my death for truth. And this is where we got to be. All this junk that happens to you now that makes you oppressed and depressed, huh, this is nothing. This is, a, this is a nothing. This is a feather. This is a, this is a crumb compared to what's coming. We better get ourselves with some kind of real, close, tight-knit relationship with Yahweh Almighty. And we better wear the word. We better use the word. We better keep our guard up. Keep our guard up in Him, in His word. Speaking His word against every stinking little detail that would enter our thought train. This is where we need to be as holy women of old. Holy women women of old we're not promised that we're not going to face blood and guts we're not promised that if you want to know why Yahweh is the only name of your God, your Elohim and your Mashiach please write to Jerry or Kathy 775 McDonald Road Covington, Georgia. That's Jerry or Kathy. 775 McDonald Road, Covington, Georgia. That's the United States of America, Georgia. Our zip code is 30014. Or call us at 770-784-0703. That number again is 770-784-0703. Or we invite you to visit our website. We have a really, you click on, when you get to our website, you can click on media and you can watch our 40 televised programs where my husband is using your King James Version with the Hebrew Scriptures to show you from the Scriptures, from the Hebrew Scriptures, how the KJV brought uh, replaced Yahweh's name with uppercase L-O-R-D, uppercase G-O-D, and the errors of Jehovah and Jesus. And then in some of the uh, complete Jewish Bible, they put Yeshu in there. That's a mistake. Again, our website is www.yahwah. You must spell it Y-A-H-W-A-H. -H. That's Y-A-H-W-A-H -H with a little hyphen, ministries.org. When you get to the site, www.yahwah-ministries.org Click on Media. Or you can go directly to the YouTube channel. Go to www.youtube.com forward slash Yahweh Ministries Y-A-H-W-A-H Ministries and listen to all of our radio programming. You can re-listen to uh, all of our televised programming, my husband's televised broadca uh, broadcasts. We have uh, Shabbat Live, our live Shabbat services online where you can view that. The main thing is we've got to have a relationship to where Yahweh visits us one-on-one. -on -one. Our personal experience is what's going to keep us our prayer life on our face before Yahweh in intercessory prayer is what's going to give us strength to face the days ahead, ladies. If you don't have that, an on-your-face relationship before Yahweh in intercessory prayer, you will not receive the strength that you need to carry on. Look what Mashiach did on his face with blood dripping from his face. 
Until next time, may Yahweh richly encourage you women. Shalom.